Hello, my trigger happy people. Welcome to the Full Frontal Nerdy Podcast, episode three, I think. I think I'm on three. I have a very special guest today, and he's very special because he was my first collaboration ever. Lantern2814, welcome to the podcast. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good, man. You and I, we have one major thing in common, and that's we like to talk about the Snyder Cut. The Snyderverse. And, <laughs> and the DCEU and all that fun stuff. And I actually haven't had a chance to really talk about it because I haven't been able to focus on Film Trigger too much lately. Um, but now I'm, I'm back in a situation where I'm able to do that again, and I'm ready to nerd out. So you ready to talk about some <laughs> Snyder stuff and some DC junk? Hell yeah, man. Yeah. All right. First of all, announcement of the Snyder Cut. Where were you and what were your thoughts? <laughs> uh, I was there live. I have a four-hour live stream on my channel. <laughs> oh, were you? I, yeah, I took the Holy day shit. off for it, man. <laughs> I was, wow. I knew it was happening that day because uh, so many people were saying it was going to happen. So many people yeah. in the DMs were saying uh, to tune in because something big was happening. And uh, yeah, man, I was there live. Uh, I definitely want to like clip out the part where it happened because I lost my shit. Like I, I was like yelling. I was running around. Uh, <laughs> I was very happy. Uh, yeah, my, my, my story is not so glorified. It's uh, <laughs> I, I literally just like woke up one day. Like I knew that uh, they were going to watch Man of Steel that day. You know, at the time, my schedule, I wasn't getting up at like eight in the morning for nothing, you know. Um, and then when it, my son sent me the clip and he's like, hey, dad, they announced it. And I watched <laughs> it. Completely ecstatic, but nothing I could do besides just share it on Twitter and be like, yay. You know, I couldn't go to my camera or do anything because I wasn't in that. I was, my camera was gone for a good month and a half. So I couldn't record or put any content out. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, worst time ever. Uh, yay. <laughs> thumbs up, Snyder Cut. <laughs> but yes, we won. And now we live in a world where the Snyder Cut is mainstream. Yeah. Now that's a very interesting situation. Because it's everywhere. Every video that I see pop up is people I've never heard talk about the Snyder Cut talking about mm -hmm. the Snyder Cut. Yes. And it's a very it's very interesting evolution. And now these people are jumping on the bandwagon, which is great. It's it's wonderful, but it's a different world when we've been living in this weird island of Snyder fandom <laughs> for so long. Right, yeah. You know, and w what's that like for you seeing all these people come out of the woodworks like what are, what are your thoughts watching this happen i would be lying if i said i didn't feel like they were all posers you know <laughs> i would be lying <laughs> but uh but you know i am really happy it is going mainstream and everybody is excited to see it for the most part at least most people i see are talking about it genuinely like seem like they're interested in it and which is like very good uh, it would suck if you were like, why is this coming out? I hate it. Like Jody from Jody's Corner. Like he's like, there's some people that are like totally against it, but it seems like the majority of people want to see it. And um, that that gets me excited because I it's going to be much better than a theatrical release. And I, we've known that for years, like just by based off all the behind the scenes stuff and all the, you know, Zack Snyder images and stuff. Like you could tell the movie had a lot more to it and uh, yeah, we get to see it finally. Yeah. yeah, and and it's yeah. it's it's an interesting thing to watch people discover the things that we've known for quite some time. Yeah, you know they're like, oh my god, how different is this movie? It's a completely you know watching that evolution. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you just want to pat him on the head and say it's cute. Oh, Good dark video. sides in it. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, he's in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, I had somebody send me a message. Um, somebody, I, I do some. Uh, I do some filmography with on the side, at least I did years ago. Mm. And we were thinking about doing a collaboration. He's like, hey, man, did you hear Dark Side is in the Snyder Cut? And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, y yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I showed him that image that I made of Dark Side, you know, with the Snyder Cut coming above him. I'm like, I, I made this image a year ago. You know, Ray Porter himself liked it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> I could see where you want to come across and, you know, and say, Ah, a lot of these guys are posers, and it, it can feel like that. You you want to be like, but you weren't there, man. Yeah. You weren't in the trenches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but that's that's the glory of it, you know. Like we, uh, and I say we, speaking in generalities, a lot of people were in the trenches fighting for this thing, and they fought for it so people can be uh, jump on board late and you know quote unquote pose that they've been fans since the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
You know, that's that's why they did it. It doesn't matter if they're posers or not. As long as they take their money and spend it right where it needs to go yep. so this can continue, mm -hmm. then it we have succeeded, you know? For sure. And yeah, if it does succeed, we will get more Justice League films. At least that's what it's like looking like, uh, which is really but, exciting. Yeah. Well, I mean, that le that leads the question, like, uh, do you think they'll let him finish his full arc, his original his original idea like i i, I, so I want to say five part arc but i've heard maybe six part sometimes yeah i've heard mostly like the five part arc and we have yeah. like the first three parts you know man of steel bvs justice league those are your first three parts so would they give him like 300 million more dollars to finish two more parts uh that all is predicated on how well the snyder cut does and how much people like it i mean if it, it becomes a sensation you know if people are like, wow, you got to check out the Justice League movie that was never released, you know, uh, if it yeah. becomes a big thing, I could see them doing that. Uh, but the question also is, like, does Zack Snyder want to do that? Because that's five, like, to seven years more of his life that he has to invest in making more Justice League films. So I wonder if, like, they would want to just make one more Justice League film to, you know, wrap it up or a season because they're talking about splitting it up this Justice League film into episodes uh, yeah. into a full season so they might just like all right do another season and uh that's uh will be the conclusion of everything cuz we you know with a season of television you could tell more of a story uh and they have right. like 4 to 5 hours of footage on this Justice League film so we're going to get a lot uh in this uh <laughs> Snyder cut I wonder like when you say you know they might condense it you know I mean condensing it being a uh, not maybe the correct word but, you know, may, instead of letting him do, you know, two more movies, just continue this possible series. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that that tugs at my heartstrings is, okay, but is it going to be put into a video format that I can own and keep in my own, you know, private collection, you know? Or is this something that is only going to be on HBO Max streaming and I have to have it in order to watch it anytime I want to? Yeah, that's another worry by, by me because I definitely want a physical, like, steel book, you know, to put right next to BVS. Like, that's right. what I really want. <laughs> and uh, Exa yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I want him, I want them to release the Snyder Cut or release the Snyder Vision. Hashtag release the Snyder Vision. <laughs> because if they just put out what you know, this uh, original Justice League was supposed to be, then we are ending on a cliffhanger. Yep. <laughs> and that's, that's, I mean, it's like, yeah, we got to see it. Now what? <laughs> you know, now what? And it, it seems very interesting. You know, we, we hear, uh, um, you know, uh, rumors about the flash and, and, you know, uh, Michael Keaton coming back possibly mm -hmm. and all this stuff. It makes me wonder, what what's what, going on what, what's <laughs> what, going on yeah. what what are they doing here like uh, eight uh warner brothers is so full of promises like i'm i'm weary to believe anything here mm -hmm. you know and i don't want to get too excited about anything i mean heck remember the the slate movie, yeah the movie slate yeah. i mean oh, holy crap that seemed great and now that's nothing you know and and i get a little worried about how they're moving forward and what i should actually believe because i would hate hate for snyder to get snydered again yeah <laughs> you know with them you know doing the empty promises i hope there's a contract i hope there's a he signs something that says this is what i'm going to get so he knows where his expectations are you know and has himself covered in case in, in case somebody else joins the team and says mm, you know what we're gonna go a different route suddenly mm -hmm. so that's that's one thing that's my concern with where I, wherever the heck these people are going <laughs> And it might lead to an air cut. Yeah, it might lead to that as well. I mean, the thing is, like, we don't know much of the details of what happened uh, behind the scenes to let Zack Snyder get his movie. We know he showed right. the executives the movie in, like, February, and they got real excited. And that's, like, where um, the contracts were probably signed and stuff like that. Uh, but I, thought it, I yeah. thought it was unwatchable. Yeah, it was unwatchable. Yeah, that was definitely a line they put out because they didn't want to admit like that they put out a piece yeah. of shit film <laughs> over right. what was more cohesive. I mean, even Zach's film, it was kind of compromised from the get-go, but at least it was going to be more cohesive than what we got in the end. Um, yeah. But it, what it seems like is that Zack Snyder is going to go back and he's going to get rid of those compromises and he's going to really put out his original work uh, which is very exciting, but as you said, that's a cliffhanger also, so uh, we're going to have to get more of that. 
and uh, yeah, big yeah. Old, big question mark here. And if they, do you think there's any ground to the David Ayer cut possibly moving forward, considering that according to David Ayer, it's pretty much just ready. It just needs to be edited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he know, said like, is it, yeah. He says it's gonna be like uh, a lot cheaper to do than like the Snyder cut. Which is something I could definitely see them doing, especially if the Snyder Cut is like very popular and stuff, and it gives them a lot of traction. Uh, that's another movie they could put out easily, um, but that it, it needs the demand. I don't know if the demand is there for the Air Cut yet. Uh, I'm sure it would grow like over the next year or so. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. Where is it necessary? Like, is it even necessary? You mm -hmm. know, how necessary is it? You know, if they if they're moving forward with this Snyder verse direction in some sort of way, you know, how important is doing the air cut to that? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, they, it could tie in a lot more tightly than we thought it, who knows, man. I, you know what? The air cut is the only little bit of hope I'm holding on to for me personally to like Jared Leto's Joker. <laughs> I, I don't know. Where do you stand on Jared Lowe's Joker, if you don't mind me asking I'm, real quick? You know, well, you're still going to have the damage tattoo. You're still going to have the gangster yeah. look. But I, Jared Leto's an amazing actor, and I right. kind of liked his Joker, at least the mannerisms he was doing, like the growls and stuff. Like, I felt it was, like, real Jokery. Like, <laughs> when he was uh, he was sitting on that dude's lap in, like, that yeah. kitchen, he's like, you're going to be my friend. Like, that that seemed like a Joker thing. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of moments like that, and... um. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're still going to get the same look and stuff. And I wonder if we're going to get more backstory on what happened to his teeth and stuff. Apparently that had something to do with the Robin death and, uh, maybe there would be more Batman, but I doubt it. Cause I don't think Ben Affleck was on set long enough to shoot scenes, uh, at least yeah, that many scenes. At least yeah. in the shadows, you know, it yeah. would be a, in storytelling. Um, I, I'm uh, like you, uh, Jared Leto is an amazing actor. I 100%. I don't think anybody would dispute that mm. or at least have the grounds to. And I was really excited to see this Joker on, on screen. And even when he came out, like when the te teaser trailer came out, I got even more excited. Mm. But when the film came out, it was like, wait a minute. I feel catfished here. <laughs> you know, so something's not right. And I, I, I have to see what's on that cutting room floor because what's in that movie now, I, I just can't follow through with it. I can't, I don't like it. It doesn't fit to me. It seems like he was recorded in a separate time in a separate room for a separate movie, mm -hmm. you know, and then they placed him in this movie and it's very, very strange. And I hope maybe we'll at least catch a glimpse of that somewhere, maybe in a documentary, if they don't le release the air cut, then in a documentary, but it'd be very, I'm very curious to see if they do release the air cut, how well that tie ties in into the Snyder verse and where Warner brothers potentially could be going with this entire thing that mm -hmm. is still secrecy. Nothing but secrecy with these guys. Of, of course, of course. And uh, Steppenwolf was supposed to be in Suicide Squad. There was supposed to be a cameo, but they never yeah. shot it. At least that's what David Ayer is saying. They never actually shot it. They cut it out on the script stages. Yeah, um, and Parademons too, yeah, right? They, yeah. But, know, they had them designed and stuff. So in order for that to get back in the movie, they would have to go back and shoot those scenes, which sounds like it would cost money. Like, it sounds like it would cost yeah. more money and... I don't think that's what David Ayer is talking about when he's talking about his su his Suicide Squad. He's talking about something he already had that was right. ready to go, and they probably already tested it in front of audiences and stuff like that. Uh, at least that's what I imagine. Um, yeah, yeah. I, one of the things that I read was that he said his original teaser, you know, how it was much darker tone, yeah. not so not so bright and bubble gummed up, was the tone that his movie was, you know, and the rest of that stuff just happened later you know how they mm. brightened it up and we we as film fans recognize that from the get-go oh yeah <laughs> you know we're like oh that's a lot brighter than the original trailer <laughs> like okay we well, can see what's going on here and now they're playing queen all right we know what we know what happened. did you like the pop music in the movie i felt it actually gave the movie a little bit more life <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like it just it, yeah, yeah. It, it didn't it didn't bother me it, like, it didn't stick out you know i'm not expecting david Ayer to make a snyder movie you know yeah and when it comes to that movie as it is, I don't think it's terrible. I can tell it's very discombobulated, but I do like the tone of it for the most part. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when I watched the movie Bright, also done by David Ayer, mm -hmm. I can 
I could see the resemblance in his signature, you know, of how he shot these movies. And so when it comes to them adding those tracks, I don't think it really took away from what Ayer was doing. But again, I don't know what is his and what's not his exactly, because this one's a little less Frankenstein that Justice League was, a little mm -hmm. bit more smooth. So it's hard to tell what exactly, where his ends and Warner Brothers. Yeah, because you know, he he shot interference. all the reshoots. Yeah, so you know they were interfering, changing the movie and stuff like that. But right, so they David Ayer was shooting it, yeah. all the stuff. You know. Right. So it still had a signature on it. So now Warner Brothers seems like they're trying to clean up after themselves. Finally, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, years uh, later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean they've been silent. Like I, they could have been planning this the whole time. You know, mm -hmm. I, we don't know. You know, Kevin Sujihara and Jeff Johns are in different spots now. Mm -hmm. uh, Sujihara was fired. I yeah, I was about to say, he's yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah, I mean, fired in a rich businessman sense. Uh, meaning he had a party sexual, and a cake yeah. and a, sexual yeah. allegations and stuff like that, too. I mean, well, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a bunch of problems. Right. But. Yeah, he, that, that's a whole shit show right there. Yeah. Um, but Jeff Johns. Mm -hmm. Now, you have... An interesting, take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an interesting take. Yeah, it's an interesting take, and I think it's a take that deserves some, you know, uh, it deserves some light to be shed onto. Uh, ultimately, it seems like you think that he may have been misrepresented by the Snyder Cut movement. Is that does that sound accurate? Uh, I'd say that's pretty much the gist of it, um, because I feel like uh, a lot of people are looking for the one person to blame on yeah. what happened with Suicide Squad and Justice League, but Jeff Johns wasn't the only one working there, like. He had a boss. Like, Diane Nelson was his boss the whole time. Like, he had to answer to people. So, it, it really is, like, a two-sided coin here. You know, like, we're only looking at one side of the situation. And uh, I feel like maybe we should be considering that maybe he had to do this because he was getting mandates to do this. And uh, uh, he had to answer to people, right? So, that's kind of, like, where I'm coming from on that. Well, that, that's, yeah, absolutely. And maybe there's conversations, maybe, you know, they're whispering something into his ear that you know, obviously we don't know. They're like, make like, the movie lighter, you know? And he's like, all right. Like, you know, like, right. what, what am I going to do? I got to do this, you know? Like, well, it, uh, well, listen, if you could, if you succeed at making this movie lighter, we're going to you know, give you more. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we have this uh, DC universe that needs, you know, uh, needs some help with, you know, the stuff that they're doing, you mm -hmm. know, with, titans and doom patrol which he's you know, an executive he, producer on all those shows right well. yeah. right that's 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 what i'm saying like maybe there was a tie-in you know like hey we'll give you this if you take care of that you know situation um now do you do you think he does have some part to blame it oh for sure yeah. <laughs> for sure for sure i think that's where people get confused because you know i get a lot of shit for this uh take uh but but like uh he definitely had a hand in it for sure uh but like my point is like he had to do what he was doing because the studio was turning against Snyder. The BVS uh, was all for all intents and purposes. The audience did not like BVS and it got the movie became a meme and it got hate on for like a year. So, you know, when you're seeing that as an executive in ho you know, Hollywood, uh, you probably need somebody to come in and change what's going on. And they turned to Jeff Johns in that situation. And I think Jeff Johns in that spot, uh, he kind of earned to be in that spot because for like 20 years, he was working at DC as an editor. He became like a co-president of DC. And uh, he worked his way up from like the ground up. And he was known as like a genius writer, uh, you know, building universes. That's like what he's known for in the comics is building giant universes and stuff like that. So right. they probably thought he was the guy to fix it and nobody else was stepping up. You know, nobody else was willing to take that spot. Right. So uh, in, in some ways, I feel like Jeff Johns um, was the only option. And in some ways, uh, he wanted to do it because he thought he could do it. Um, but, you know, it's. It's all. It's a very. It's a big thing to un, you know unpack here. Right. Well, it's. It reminds me of um, like management in any in any position or uh, business that you're in. You're gonna go with you the know, person you, with experience, right? Like you're well, not gonna well, like. Right. Yeah. But the, then there's like, let's say you have you know, um, you know your head your head manager, you know your your GM of wherever, 
And then you have this new and excited assistant manager being told he could get a GM position. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's going to seem like that that new up and coming assistant manager is gunning for this GM position. And now everything that he does is going to be taken into that narrative. You know, like people are going to assume, well, he only did this so he could take the GM's job. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I hope I'm not losing you in my analogy here. That was fine. <laughs> but it, it, it seems to me, you know, he was being told, you know, hey, we think you're the guy for this position. And if you're good in this position, then we have an upper level position for you. And he kind of hit the ground running, excited. And it, he kind of tripped all over the Snyder cut. You mm -hmm. know, he kind of tripped all over that. I don't know if it would be intentional. You know, if his where his heart was, where his integrity was with it all, he definitely was there, definitely a big part of it. But I don't know how much of that was intentional, as I said. You know, this could be a guy that was just trying to do the best for him and slipped in some shit, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I don't think there was any malice in any decisions yeah. he was making. I, I really feel like he was trying to save, the quote-unquote save, what was uh, uh, the universe they were building. Uh, because before that, he was working on the Green Lantern movie, and that failed horribly, and he kind of lost all the trust from Warner Brothers, right? And on Man of Steel and BVS, uh, Jeff Johns took a back seat, and they didn't listen to him at all for those movies. Like, there was a time on Man of Steel where Jeff Johns was like, I think we're going the wrong direction with Superman. I don't think it's probably a good idea to snap Zaga's neck. I don't think the audience is going to uh, gravitate to this. And they said, we're not listening to you because of Green Lantern 2011. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they went through with what Zach did. And what was the big problem on the movie that everybody didn't like? Oh, I liked it, but like most people didn't like it, <laughs> it was the Zod neck snap. And everybody's saying, that's not my Superman. And then they're like, holy shit, that's exactly what Jeff Johns was telling us. <laughs> like, <laughs> So it's yeah. like... I can see both sides of that, you know. Mm -hmm. I can see his defense, like, you know, as a, you know, as, as a what you said, a president or co-president of yeah. DC, you know, he has an emotional investment in this character, and he knows what it's supposed to be, you know, in that comic book realm. Mm -hmm. And I can also see Snyder going, "Yeah, but we've seen that. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> we've seen that before." <laughs> like. Let's, let's let's look at something else. Can we look at something else for you know the next few movies, please? Uh, there was yeah. a. I, I hate to cut in, but uh, oh, you're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> um, Je Jeff Johns also was quoted one time when saying that uh, when he's working with the WB executives and something on these films, he says it, it gives me more weight in the room when I've wrote the books. So he had an element of cockiness, you know, you know, like he's like, I did this. I, you know, I'm obviously no way more than anybody working on these films. And in some respects he does. I mean, he was working on these comics for like 20 to 30 years uh, since the nineties. So, yeah. you know, um, there is a element of truth to that, but once again, like Jeff Johns, uh, probably let it get to his head a little bit that he was the only one that knew what was right. Even though Zack Snyder's take on these characters is pretty accurate and really engaging and uh, something I want to see. I definitely want to see a darker version of these characters, which is a uh, more cliched thing to say, darker. But I want to see like more real world uh, apply to the characters, right? Yeah, something that we can relate to on yeah. a human level, even though we're talking about, you know, a superhuman being from outer space, you mm -hmm. know. I, I completely get that. And that's why I love these movies. That's one of the many reasons why I love these movies. So, but I, I agree with you for the most part. Uh, I think Jeff Johns was given a bad rap. <laughs> yeah, it uh, still I, does. I think, still does. People uh, still blame him to this day for everything. Right. Like, yeah. You know. As you said, you know, he, they want him. He's the patsy. You know, they, they, he, they're the, he's the guy that they all went after. Even though there's you know, like 25 other executives that, <laughs> that worked on these movies. <laughs> like, right. you know, well, I, I mean, yeah. honestly, with how Warner Brothers seems to be, or at least has been, it wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly what he was to them was the past. You're like, well, mm -hmm. if things go south, you know, one way or another, we can blame it on, on Jeff Johns. Yeah. And I, if it goes, yeah. Yeah. And if it goes south the other way, we can blame it on Snyder. 
So yeah, we're we're clear. We're just back here trying to make a movie, and these guys are ruining it. That's that's how we're gonna play this card. And, and you're you're probably gonna get some dislikes on this because we're talking about Jeff Johns in a non-negative <laughs> way. But, but, like, but hey, you know what, man? I, bring it on. Like, <laughs> I need some controversy on this damn channel. I'm way too nice sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try I try to be Sweden over here, and you know, like, well, let's look at both sides. But you know what? Fuck it, man. I mean. I, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a fucking duck, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he, mm -hmm. I, I truly, I don't think that he truly had malintent, but now we're beating a dead horse with that. A little bit. Um, <laughs> so hopefully our listeners will, you know, actually listen to us and derive their own conclusion and discuss with us in the comments below in a nice adult manner, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It, um, I still want to talk about it because like, <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely like, I, I don't understand the hatred because like, Jeff Johns only really had influence over Suicide Squad and Justice League. And at the end of 2017, he leaves. Like, he's he steps down as DC Films president. So he's been gone for, like, three years. Yeah. Like, he, like, what you saw with Birds of Prey, like, that's WB. Like, that's what they think the superhero should be. Like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, we, we, we got bigger problems than what Jeff Johns yeah. did, honestly. Yeah, we do. And, and I think a lot of the issue with Jeff Johns is people trying to defend Snyder. You know, they they want they want to, you know, yeah, but they, excuse me, <clears throat> they want to, uh, they want to protect Snyder, and they think that he was being you know malicious towards him. But now he and won. You know, now Snyder won. He got he's getting his movie. You know, it's like yeah. victory now. And yeah, I just don't understand why we still hold all this like hatred towards this guy. Yeah, well, maybe maybe he needs to come out with a statement. <laughs> yeah, well, if he came out and said, I, "I can't wait to see the Snyder cut," that would like change the world. Like you know, what I'm saying people right. would like <laughs> their minds would blow up. You know? Yeah, he he definitely needs needs to say something. You know, yeah. or he's or he's just sitting in his office, which is probably you know filled with all of his own work. Yeah, and a giant picture of himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, ah, yes, my dick is huge in here. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Man, <laughs> what a pendulum swing that conversation was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving forward um, with Warner Brothers seemingly cleaning up after themselves. Mm. Snyder Cut with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, what, yeah. <laughs> I, I, li listen, maybe you could enlighten me. You understand. I, I, only know, <laughs> I only know this through, like, little bits I hear on Twitter and stuff like that, you know. But what... What's the meat and potatoes about that, if you know any? Well, uh, well, from what I could tell, everything I could see, and I actually talked to John Aaron Garza through DMs and stuff, the guy who was saying that the Snyder Cut would need money to finish, remember? And he got yeah, all that yeah. shit for that. Yeah, yeah, I know Garza. Oh, yeah. Not personally, but I, yeah. But anyway, he was saying this, like I think like, almost two months ago, that Ryan Reynolds is in talks to play Green Lantern in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I thought he was like joking around, but he's he's adamant about it. He's like dead serious about it. And uh, so I gotta think there's something there, you know, where smoke there's fire. And Deadpool, the they're trying to make the third movie, and it can't get off the ground right now. And with coronavirus and stuff, Hollywood is not really putting a lot of films into production. Um, so Ryan Reynolds has like a clear slate, and Zack Snyder's trying to get additional photography, which they should like start doing like any month now. And uh, yeah, man, like, Ryan Reynolds has a connection to DC and Warner Brothers. They like him. Uh, he doesn't hate Green Lantern. That's, a lot of people get confused because they see Deadpool, they see him making fun of Green Lantern, they think he hates the movie, but he met right. his wife on the movie. You know, like, right. he, that movie's a big part of his life. And the thing he hates the most about the movie is the CGI suit. So, like, I mean, like, if you just change <laughs> that, he'll probably come back. It's not. It wouldn't take that much convincing to get Ryan Reynolds back, especially when you have like Hollywood, all this money that they would give him just to make a cameo, and yeah. um, he's he's become a star now. Like before Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds wasn't a Hollywood star. Like Green Lantern was supposed to be the movie that be, like made him a star, and it failed miserably, almost destroyed his career, and then he made a huge comeback and made some great films after that, and he became Deadpool, and now he's a huge A-lister. Pretty much pulled a Clooney a George Clooney you yeah. know like George Clooney was just a you know a, a, a B yeah a B star and, and then, then Batman yeah. Batman and Robin mm -hmm. and almost, <laughs> almost destroyed him. his career yeah, yeah almost destroyed same exact thing um man if so 
so it's not that he's already shot anything then. No, no, not at all. Okay, that's that's what I was I was very confused about. Um, man, if it's you, all talks right now, honestly, yeah. If he does come back, talk about one of the most unanticipated comebacks yeah, ever in life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'd be huge. And like, yeah. like it's it's so interesting because people hear it and they're excited about it, even though the movie was trash. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very strange situation to be in. You know, they, being asked to come back to reprise a role that everyone hated you in. <laughs> or not really. They didn't really hate him in. They just hate he, the movie. He, he, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, that's the difference. They yeah. hated the movie. You know, but now I wonder if the part that is in question is the one that was rumored Mark Wahlberg was going to be in. Yeah, that was a long time ago when they were casting BBS. Like, Mark Wahlberg was in the casting room. And, uh... Yeah, he, that's another like big power move that they can do, but uh, it doesn't seem Mark Wahlberg's very interested in that, right? So This would really t hone in to what it seems that Warner Brothers is trying to do with their multiverse. You know, mm -hmm. to bring Ryan Reynolds into this, I mean, he could be from a different, you know, universe to stopping mm -hmm. in to say hello. Yeah. You know, it, it could really tie into that way. Yeah, I, I, I imagine... Um, like the Green Lantern 2011 movie is a completely different universe, right? It's like a secret origin Elseworld, like... Of yeah. Hal Jordan, and when he shows back up in Zack Snyder's Justice like it's gonna be like a new suit. It's like it's the same actor, but a different like version of the character. Uh, oh, I see. You know. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah, because I, obviously he can't be shoehorned into the Snyderverse, you know, without any sort of explanation. Mention. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. At all, you know, it's it's that you'd be in that same situation that Marvel's facing with trying to get the X Men into their MCU. You yeah. know, it's like where have they been for the past you know eighty years? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's a good theory. I, I didn't, I wasn't really looking at it like that. I was looking more into he would jump from his universe into this. One. Yeah, I think it's what but, a lot of people think too, and they don't like. They're like, this is impossible. But then you get the Keaton news with Batman. It's like, well, <laughs> if that could happen, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, anything could really happen right now, you know? Heck, speaking of Keaton, man, what's, <laughs> like, to me, I hear that, and I think that's great news because it could potentially lead to what everybody wants, and that's the Batman Beyond. Oh, yeah, man. You know, and, like, that's what we've been screaming for years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Batman Beyond, Keaton, you have, like, a six-year window to get him to do this role, you know? I think this could potentially build up to that and set up a finish to that Tim Burton series. Cut it, you know, after Batman Returns and then just have this be a continuation of that. For sure. I just thought about this. I wonder if they, if it, if they do get that, go that route where they do a Batman Beyond with Tim Burton, bring him back, Michael Keaton on board. I wonder if we could get some sort of flashback sequence or a dream sequence where we can get Jack Nicholson back mm -hmm. as a Joker. You remember uh, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker? Hell yeah. yeah. Just yeah, do the that, same thing with Jack exactly, Nicholson. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And he's actually Chris O'Donnell morphed into Jack Nicholson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what they could do right there. Oh, man. The potential. <laughs> right. it's, the, the, it's endless. What if Keaton doesn't come back? Yeah, because it all still is in talks. And yeah, I mean, he could not. But, you know... They're, with the amount of money they're going to want to offer him. And Keaton loves Batman, dude. Like, every oh, yeah. single interview, he's like, I'm Batman. You know? Like, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if they and if they agree to have Burton come back, then, yeah, there's absolutely no way that he wouldn't do it. But let's speak hypothetically here. Yeah. And say, you know, scheduling conflict. Burton doesn't want to do it. Whatever. Hmm. I still think Keaton would do it without Burton. But, yeah. Yeah. That, well, hypothetically we speaking. Hmm. What about bringing back Bale, Kilmer, uh, Val Kilmer, or George Clooney? Yeah, I mean, that was another thing going around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I could see uh, maybe Bale. Not Val Kilmer, maybe, because Val Kilmer is, uh, he doesn't seem like he's very interested in ever doing anything superhero-related again, really. It seems yeah, like he, it. Yeah. I don't think he's really aged into that role very well. Yeah, he's become a fat man. What are we doing, fat man here? <laughs> yeah, not to insult him, not, not, not you know, fat shaming here, but, you know, it seems he's taken that art form into a different direction. You oh, know, yeah. He does uh, he does a stand-up comedy now yeah. where he goes, ar goes around, uh, what, what, pretend to be, what, what, is it Edgar Allan Poe? Is that who he is? Something like that. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I haven't seen it, and I'd love to see what that is exactly, but he seems to have taken on a more artistic route with his work, which I totally respect. 
So I could totally see him not coming back. George Clooney, that was just thrown out there because, you know, he was in one. Mm -hmm. But I actually think George Clooney brought back to do like a Dark Knight Returns. That would be amazing. Like, <laughs> I would love that because <laughs> he's wow. become like a great actor since uh, those days. So, you know. well, yeah, and it's not even just his acting like in that movie. He was a good actor when that movie came when Batman and Robin was originally filmed. Mm -hmm. But, dude, he phoned in that entire. Performance. Oh, yeah, man. He wasn't I mean, there. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's bad. Like yeah. every time I see George Clooney on film, I'm like, George Clooney, you are the only actor who cannot blame Schumacher or how you came across in this movie. That's your fault for phoning in mm -hmm. this, this performance. It's like he's just reading every line from your cue card. Oh yeah, and Rip uh, Rip uh, my, uh, Joel Schumacher. He just passed away recently. And, oh um, yeah, that's right. You're right. I, I totally forgot about mm -hmm. that. He did. They like, just uh, like last week or earlier this week. Yeah. And uh, he always said those movies were more like toy commercials. He never really uh, thought much of uh, Batman as he was making it. Um, so, you know, but people gave yeah. so much shit for those movies over the years. And he's a great director. I mean, you see any of the yeah. other films he's made, they're like fantastic. He just wasn't the right person for that movie. Yeah. But even then, he ended up making a movie that is so bad it's good to watch yeah. with friends. It's hysterical. And laugh at. Like, yeah. like it, he ended up making a very entertaining movie, but not in a way that I think he thought it would be entertaining. Yeah. It's the same <laughs> you know? thing with the, the Adam West Batman show. It's like, it's, it's comical yeah. because essentially that's what he made. He made a 1966 Batman in, in 1990s flesh, you know, and you got to give him credit for that. But man, Sometimes it's just hard to watch. Yeah, <laughs> certain well, shots. We we live in a world now where like you know Troll Two and like the room where uh, you know Lisa why you know like that's <laughs> those movies are have a fan base you know right. So like there's a place for Batman and Robin, um, but it, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Bale possibly returning. Do you think he would want to return? I don't think he would. I don't think he would. And you know that rumor was really started just to get like. Uh, as a joke, really. At least that's what, from my understanding, <laughs> from the people that yeah. started, it was just a joke, and people have been running with it ever since, uh, which was just a few days ago. But um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't think he would do it. I think he's moved on. He's doing other projects and stuff. That, that's the thing with these superhero films. Like, it takes a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? We're talking years of your life, and these are artists that want to make other stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know. I, I think they should just focus on uh, probably Keaton because he seems like he'd be the one that's more likely to do it because uh, yeah. he loves the yeah. character a yeah. lot. Keaton or bust. Keaton or bust. Yeah. Um, so, and then now we have Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, dude. I uh, really that need whole, it. That whole thing. Now, I, dude, yes, we all want it. It has to happen. I need I know, it. I need I, it. <laughs> yes, I need it. I need it. I know Morgan would be on board with it. Oh, yeah. Know, he'll, I remember one interview specifically him saying that you know warner brothers needs to get their head out of their asses and start listening to the fans mm -hmm. uh so he, he'd totally be on board but there's this weird thing that happens if he does come back and that is to make that a, as effective as it should be you would have to bring affleck back yeah yeah for the cameo in the end when he reads thomas yeah, wayne's card exactly um, yeah you know, and that whole thing is still up in the air. Is Affleck going to make a return or even should he? He is in shape. Like, is that, it's not like right. it would be, like, that hard for him to come back and do one scene like a, like, like he did in Suicide Squad where he was just there for, like, one day. Like, that wouldn't be you know, a hard thing to do. It's just it's a matter of does he want to do it. Right. And I think he would if it was just for, like, one cameo, you know? And it's just uh, just for the Flash movie and it just uh, it's just to put a bow on everything. Um, whether he wants to do a Batman movie after that is like, you know, that's like hypothetical way down the road. Um, I, I, I yeah. honestly don't see a Batman movie. Yeah. With, for, with uh, Affleck. Yeah. Uh, if he comes back at, at all, it, it, just to finish out the Snyder cut and maybe for this cameo that also ties into the Snyder, you know, verse, mm. you know, I think that's the only way he'll, he'll come back for that. Uh, or it, like it could be like a thing where you start the movie with Affleck, you see him like as Batman at the very beginning for like a cameo role, and then we do the Flashpoint thing. It changes the universe. Thomas Wayne, Jeffrey Dean Morgan's Batman, and then at the end when Flash changes everything back, the universe slightly changes a little bit, and you see the Robert Pattinson Batman instead of the Ben Affleck Batman. Like that's what changed. Like they're 
like the bone would, structure yeah, changed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, I would still feel robbed though reading yeah. that letter. Like, no, Affleck needs yeah. to be crying holding that letter. <laughs> yeah, dude, Affleck would pull it off so great too. Like, oh, I can see would. it in my head already. Yeah, uh, and I feel bad for this Matt Reeves Batman. Oh yeah, right dude. Now. I feel uh, like everyone, it's already got hate. Like they're already yeah. going uphill right now. It's, it's tough. Yeah, that they are, and it's probably best to, for Warner Brothers just to keep that in its own finite world and try not to connect it. Yeah. Or if they do connect it, just like make it a very small sliver that will play, you know, yeah. into later on down the road. Mm. But it's just, it seems like a cool, cool concept. I think it's all just bad timing with everything. COVID nineteen, Snyder Cut announcement. You know how quickly, you know they went from Affleck to, you know Pattinson. I think it's just everything was mismanaged on a on a timing level. Oh yeah, they had no idea what direction they were really going. You know, like <laughs> they were just or throwing we, things or, against the wall. So he was stuck. Or we don't, we don't know what's going on oh, yeah. in their heads. You know, they again, they may have had this planned out for two years. Maybe. You know, like well, uh, you know, once. And once Matt Reeves Batman is going for a little bit, then we'll make the Snyder Cut announcement. And I'll, I don't know. We don't. We don't know. Warner Brothers is a an enigma, mm. so well, it's hard to tell. We know they had the is. multiverse planned out since uh, the CW Flash show uh, when he yeah. showed Ezra. We know they at least had that on the mind, uh, and that's what they were setting up already. Uh, so at least far back as then, that they had a plan for all this stuff. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that that we needed we needed that at that time. Yeah, dude. Like <laughs> that gave me so much hope for the sign. I remember making a video like think big picture guys. Like if they're doing this on the Flash CW show, that means we can have a Snyder cut that's a completely different version of Justice League and it will make sense. Right. Like <laughs> and, Right. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not they're not trying to brush it under the rug, you know. They're yeah. they're saying, "Hey, guess look who it is, everybody." You know, um and I think that's cool and I hopefully this Flash movie is it gaining steam yet? <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's been in development hell for like years, and uh, yeah, yeah, and it's supposed to be out already. Oh yeah. You, you know, is uh, I forget his name. The director of it is he still attached to it? I, I forget the name of the director. It's like some different name, but they've gone through like five different directors at this point. And you're a big movie fan, yeah. You know that's not a good sign. <laughs> like when you're going right. through multiple directors, multiple writers, uh, there's something wrong with the movie. And I feel like it's because they're trying to cram in all this multiverse stuff they're trying to set up their bigger universe and explain away like why these movies are so different and stuff like that um i feel like that's what's happening on this movie and a lot of writers don't want to deal with it because it's like they have all these mandates they have to get all this stuff in the movie and um i think ezra said that they don't want to make the movie until it's like perfect but we know that's not the case <laughs> they're, just, they're just waiting until like uh, they have something good enough you know uh yeah yeah. Well, and they seem to they seem to be catering to uh, some of Ezra Miller's requests. Mm -hmm. uh, what it seems like, you know, which is a very scary thing to do uh, <laughs> when 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 you let actors kind of take yeah. the helm. Hey, look at what Mar things. Margot Robbie did with Birds of Prey. Essentially, she was a big part of that movie, and like, that's why it came out the way it did. With essentially, yeah. from everything I could tell from behind the scenes and stuff. Well, well, yeah, it's it's you know they they said they saw that she had a fan base just mm -hmm. like just a margot robbie fan base like wherever she is her fans are gonna go mm -hmm. you know and then they have a harley quinn fan base and that just merged into a mega fan base and they didn't show so up put her in the lead of everything but they didn't have it didn't seem like she had anybody in her ear helping guide her through this stuff yeah you know it's like hey you're just giving this actress all these producer and writing and directing whatever responsibilities and she doesn't. She doesn't know this world. You know, you, you need. She needs somebody in her corner, a coach of some sort. You know, yeah. guiding her. Hey, uh, maybe you should take this direction and lead into this rather than whatever the hell that was. Yeah. Because that mo that movie, I I had trouble following it. Like, mm -hmm. me and my son and I went and watched it, and I was. Uh, it was he he liked it. Yeah. He liked it a lot. Yep. And he was also 15, but you know, it was chopped up bad for sure. Like, uh, yeah, you know, there was a lot more there that they probably cut for uh, whatever reason. Um, but yeah, like Margot Robbie's still young. Like, I, she's younger than me, isn't she? Like 24 or something like that. Like, like she's she's only been acting since she was like 19 or 17, something like that. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not exactly sure how old she is. Um, but the point but, is, yeah. like, she doesn't have enough experience to like head a movie and like. 
you know, make all these story decisions and character decisions. Like she needs to be working with a, a bunch of writers and, you know, people that know what they're doing really. Um, yeah. you know, for, for it to come out as like something really good. Um, which Birds of Prey was not. You know, I will I will take that to the grave. Like Birds of Prey was a goddamn train wreck. Like I, I'm not, like it, it was. Yeah. It, it was it was such a weird thing to watch. It's like it's almost like like watching an amateur movie. Like you know, like a mm. like a YouTube amateur version of that movie, but with a budget. <laughs> yeah, uh, with the breakfast sandwiches. When she was like, like there was this whole scene about breakfast sandwiches. I'm like. I could have did this. Like <laughs> I get breakfast right. sandwiches every day. <laughs> now listen, I will give them credit. That sandwich like good as fuck. Oh yeah, dude. That's like <laughs> that's the ideal breakfast sandwich. <laughs> I mean, and I'm vegetarian. I don't eat. I don't eat what was on that sandwich, and it looked good. It looked good. Oh my god. Uh, but that was probably like a third of the budget right there. Uh, uh, Margot Robbie is 29. Actually. 29. Oh. 29 years old. Then she is older than me. <laughs> uh, well, she's yeah. Well, not not me. <laughs> uh, I'm almost. I'm eight years older than her. So mm -hmm. Margot Robbie really needs someone to whisper in her ear and help help her guide her through this stuff because actors taking over in these type of positions almost never works. It works out sometimes, but look at and going way back, st staying in Warner Brothers. Look at Superman Four: The Quest for Peace oh, yeah. when Christopher Reeve took over. And that movie was a shit show. And not like Batman and Robin. Ooh, let's have fun watching this it's movie boring. and laughing at it. It's boring. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it doesn't make... I I, I, I don't get it. Like, it, it just... Why why would people think this was a good idea? Why would they let him do this mm. to this character? And all the problems that came with. But still, this makes me concerned about how much they're letting Ezra Miller take him lead, which I don't know how much they're letting him lead this role well, or this movie. When Ezra made those comments about the Flash movie, that was like a couple of years ago. Um, but he said uh, that he was working with Grant Morrison, uh, you know, the famous comic book writer that was a pretty big uh, part of the Flash comics for a long time. Uh, right. So, like, if he's working with Grant Morrison, I think uh, we got something good. <laughs> I, but, right. Uh, yeah, I don't think Ezra would be writing anything for this movie. Right, well, and, and that, and uh, and essentially, Grant Morrison would be in that coach position I'm talking about. Yeah, you know that that person on his team that could help. You know, hey, this is what needs to happen. You have the voice, I have the mind. Let's team up and get this out, get this together. So, I hope this is what happens. I hope that it's a great movie. We all hope it's going to be a great movie. It's going to flirt with the Flashpoint timeline, I guess. Maybe something. Thomas Wayne going to be in it. Yeah. Yeah. And Keaton going to be in it, maybe. You know, so. so uh, did you have something you want to say? Oh, well, I was just going to say uh, a lot is riding on this Flash film. Like, I don't think people really understand. Like, like if this Flash movie tanks, if this is not, like, if people hate it, like, how far back does that set us with everything? Like, cause right. they're not right. going to go forward if people don't like it. Right. So, uh, I uh, really uh, hope uh, it's good. That's all I'll say. And people can say the same thing about the Oh yeah. Uh, well, Wonder I, Wonder I, Woman. I say yeah. one woman, 84, you know, uh, which was written me. by Jeff Johns. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Patty Jenkins. Him and Patty Jenkins. Yeah, they, de <laughs> they definitely teamed up together, but which is weird. Like, why would she want him back? I, it's just, you know, well, cause Jeff know. Johns is not a, he's a good writer. Yeah, I mean that's his strength uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, you know it, he's they put him back into a position where he is able to, you know, do his best work, and that's okay. That's fine. That's okay, people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, you know he's out of the position that he sucked at. That's fine. Yeah. But now Patty Jenkins is talking about you know uh, Wonder Woman three and the the Amazonian spinoff thing. It's, it's it's sitting on the back burner for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, that movie was supposed to be out already. Like we were supposed to already see yeah. that. Like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it got held the back once, and then the COVID put it back again, which killed the marketing for it because it had a lot of marketing build up for it. They were ramping it up, oh, yeah. and then COVID hit, and it's just like, oh my oh, god. <laughs> I know it's so weird. Like I'll go to the local you know corner store down here, and I'll see you know like a box of Cheerios with Wonder Woman on yeah. it. Like, ha. <laughs> here's money well spent. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, and I guess Patty Jenkins is known for, uh, like she kind of jumped ship between, you know, Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman, Woman movie and this one and, you know, kind of did a clean, uh, a palate cleanser in between. So she's known to do that, but this, 
you know, just my Snyder Cut mind has me wondering, well, is Warner Brothers maybe, maybe, potentially Snydering Pat, Patty <laughs> Jenkins in a way of like, well, actually, we're going back to the Snyder thing now, you know? Well, I don't know if they're going to reshoot anything. <laughs> like, this movie's <laughs> in the can. Like, this is ready to go right now. Yeah. Well, I, what I mean is like, you know, like, well, let's just hold off on the Wonder Woman 3. Is what yeah, I mean. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're back on this ship over here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, Warner Brothers, nothing will surprise me by them. Wonder anymore. Woman they, 84 is so weird, by the way. It's just such a – why Why are we in the 80s? Like, uh, this doesn't seem like it fits with anything. And no, I'm very and concerned about the movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're saying it's not a sequel – it's not a sequel. It's not a prequel. I don't, I don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> right. What the fuck is this? And then you have that whole Grace Randolph thing, you know, about... It's it Flashpoint, yeah. <laughs> it, could, well, it could also take, you know, uh, Flashpoint, you know, uh, storylines and put them in there. And it's like, what does that mean exactly? It's such a big question mark. And the trailers show us nothing of any of that. <laughs> You know, so the way you feel about the Flash movie is how I've been feeling about the Wonder Woman movie. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that movie might have a lot riding on it. And I could be wrong. I could watch it and it be just as impactful as, you know, uh, Birds of Prey was. Yeah. You know, uh, it, meaning it holds no validity yeah. one way or another. It's just it's That's just what I'm day. thinking. Yeah. You know, which, okay, sure, whatever. You know. As long as we get the Wonder Woman we know and love back, <laughs> if they continue doing Snyder cuts, we can if we can get her whatever version that was compared to whatever version's coming out now. Well, we can get that one back. That'd be fantastic. The positive thing about Wonder Woman eighty four is that it's you know it's the same director, you know, same actress, uh, a lot of the same cast. I mean, crew coming back and stuff. So, like, they got they know what made the first movie really good, and I feel like if they just focus on those bits that made that first movie good. Uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, but wh yeah. whether or not it connects to anything else, I don't think it will because I, I really feel like it's just going to be like a standalone thing. Uh, yeah. but, you know. Well, well, when you say the the crew, and from what I heard, I thought she uh, ditched a lot of her crew from that first movie. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like the same uh, production company. I think yeah. I have to look it up. Yeah, what well, I don't know enough about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody taking my word is fucking <laughs> <laughs> Google search people. <laughs> Yeah, well, hopefully it's not. Hopefully, Warner Brothers isn't trying to disguise any of their mess ups again. You know, well, let's stop with Wonder Woman three and continue with the Snyderverse. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty much it when it comes to DC and Warner Brothers and all that fun stuff. I wanted to talk to another fan, mm -hmm. you know, who knows this stuff more than I do. So <laughs> I appreciate you coming on to my channel. Thanks, man. Yeah, I had a great time talking about it. So, uh. If nobody knows, where can they find you at? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Lantern Alex, and you can check my YouTube page, Lantern Two Eight One Four, and I'm also on Twitch, Lantern Alex Two Eight One Four. I just stream a bunch of random games every now and then. Um, it's, yeah. Twitch is just for gaming, isn't it? You could do a bunch of stuff on it. You could stream this on Twitch if you wanted to. I think I appreciate you coming onto my channel. Thank you everybody for listening, and we'll catch you later. Peace. Peace. Peace.